Hello, hello. Good evening, everyone. Good evening and welcome. Welcome to our Tuesday and welcome to um, one of the last classes that we're going to have in this module. So um, there is one thing that I was, um, well, spending some time, you know, thinking about it earlier today, which is the fact that after these classes, we're basically going straight into vacation. So that's like an amazing part of um, like this course. Um, so yeah, we're not going to talk, however, about plans for the vacation, not tonight, at least maybe, maybe tomorrow, but we'll see about that. Now, uh, that's only, you know, something that I was thinking about because of the thing that we are actually going to be talking about, um, tonight, which is, is leaping. We're going to be, um, learning some phrases and also talking about, um, the different ways, different methods that we have for sleeping. However, in terms of the question that we're going to be answering, it has to do more with dreaming than with, than with sleeping. At least it has to do with dreaming for some people. I know that it might not be a topic for everyone. Maybe not everyone is interested in, um, you know, what we're going to be discussing this evening, but um, hopefully you guys do and hopefully it will turn into a great um, experience, you know, sharing about what are some of the desires that we may have. And um, what I mean by that is that we're going to be talking about traveling, but not traveling inside the earth, more like traveling outside of the earth. Having a chance to go to the moon, that is going to be the question for this evening. So stating the question as it is going to be, is basically, if you had the chance to go to the moon, would you go? And if you say yes, why would you like to go? And if you say no, why wouldn't you like to go to the moon? So that is the question. If you had the chance, you know, to um, to go to the moon, would you go? And why? Um, let's see. I told you I was going to ask you trickier questions. I was going to ask, you know, things that uh, would require some extra thought. So tonight, that is the thinking. That is what I uh, would like you guys to think about. And we're going to be getting started, I feel like, with um, starting with Abby. So if, uh, if you ever have the chance, Abby, to go to the moon, would you like to go? Yes or no? And why? Okay. So Hello. There we go. Yes. Yes. Um. I I have a uh, out of my house. Oh. Um, my Wi-Fi is bad, but I think I would like to go to the moon because mm -hmm. I would like to see the Earth, the things there. But I don't know. Maybe if the security is very very well. If not, but Maybe o other day. <laughs> Solo andamos viendo. <laughs> okay. Yes. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah, I mean, of course, of course. It, I mean, we have to consider that because if um there is a high risk of like not making it back alive, making it back alive, I think that very few of us will say yes to something like that. But nice. That sounds like a very good idea, you know, of a um a reason why you like to go to the moon. All right. Um, how about in your case, Imelda? If you ever get the chance to travel to the moon, would you like to go? Yes or no? And why? Finally, no. <laughs> Definitely no. No, because I'm afraid of height. Oh, so you're afraid of height. Well, but I I like the plane, but to hate no, no. <laughs> have you ever been? Uh, so I, uh, have you ever been on a plane? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, Once. I mean, I oh, okay, okay. Were you scared? No, actually, actually, no. It was cool. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I mean. But um, I, I was younger, you know. 
Mm, okay. And now it's like you care about your life more. You know what things are better yeah. or worse. Okay. Makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah. In my case, um, I remember that I used to be afraid. I used to be scared of, you know, the idea of uh, getting on a plane. Um, but now it's just, I am not a scared like at all. Actually, I was even applying to become a flight attendant. Um, I tried to become a part of, uh, of Qatar Airways. That's, uh, the reason why my best friend, you know, left this job because she got a job there and she's now working as a flight attendant. But um, I remember that when I was younger, I used to be very, very scared of planes. Um, but yeah, being scared of heights is something that has a lot to do with traveling by plane or traveling by, um, you know, trans, transports. Yeah, transports. That's what, how, you, how they refer to, um, to those um, vehicles that they used to go to, this, to space. But okay, so Imelda would not go to the moon. Copy. Um, how about Luis? Would you go, Luis, if you ever have the chance to go to the moon? Would you go? Yes, no, and why? Definitely, <clears throat> definitely, yes. <clears throat> okay, and I why? Like go, I like to go to the moon. Mm -hmm. Why? So that is the unique experience for me mm -hmm. and for everyone. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I like to go to the moon. It's I like, that... I like to uh -huh. I like to have that experiences, but my grandsons uh, talk about me when I was there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> uh, there you I was have away it. and they they talk about my grandfather uh, went to the moon. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. will be you will be famous. I mean, you will become part of history. And in a country like ours, you will become basically a hero. So, yeah, that's yeah. that's that's Why a great, not? yeah, that's Why a great, mm -hmm, a great okay. perspective. Great. I like to go. Thank All you. All right. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. If you ever have the chance, so you will go. I will count you in. That's nice. I mean, um, that idea is also great because, of course, you will have the chance to experience something unique in the world, like. Um, I mean, I don't know how compares how, how com. Sorry, it's um, comparisonist. You guys are in my case. I like to watch to watch those compare com, ah, conspiracy theories and all the videos about those sort of things. Um, I do believe that we have been to the moon as a, as a human uh, race. I I do believe that we have been to the moon. However. I feel like it's weird, you know, why haven't we been afterwards? Well, like, why haven't we had the chance to go again? Uh, but if it ever comes to happen, I feel like it will be an amazing experience to like even get to know someone who goes to the moon because um, what, um, <clears throat> sorry, um, what Abby said was something that I also have thought about many times you know i would like to see the earth from above like how does it look how tiny or how big does it look and how beautiful i also consider that it would look so um that would be one of the reasons and also what you mentioned luis uh that it will be something unique something very special so yeah it will be a great experience now moving on how about in your case um walter so, Walter, the question for tonight is, if you ever have the chance to go to the moon, would you like to go? Why? And, uh, I mean, why yes or why no? Uh, good evening. Evening. In my case, uh, I don't like uh, visit the moon. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, it's a uh, dangerous travel. Uh, I don't uh, confiar. Trust. No confío. I don't trust in, in the men in the NASA. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. So there's that. All right. So um, 
Yeah, it's also very tricky. There have been many, many accidents related to uh, space traveling before. Um, and yeah, it will be very complicated as well because you will have to go through a lot of like training and um, you will have to prepare your body and many aspects of you in order to, to do this one trip. So it's also, I mean, understandable to say no to something like that because it will require a lot of like effort becoming um, able to, to carry away a trip like that. But at the same time, for those who want to do it, I think it's worthy. But for those who don't trust the process, for those who, are, who don't even want to try it, it's like, all right. I mean, you're just, you know, okay as you are. So it's understandable. Okay. All right. Great. Okay. Thank you. Okay, um, how about in the case of uh, Leslie? Would you like to go to the moon, Leslie, if you are ever offered a chance? No. <laughs> and why I not? Will, I will not like to the moon because I'm afraid of heights. So, no, thanks. I pass. <laughs> okay, lo mismo, solo andamos viendo. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's, I mean, that's also understandable because what is higher than a trip to the moon i think that there will not be anything as high as that so yeah if you um if you're one of those people who is simply scared of height well it is not recommended so good no call. me subo ni a la rueda así que no <laughs> <laughs> si no quiero vivir ni en segunda planta <laughs> yeah good call that's a good call Okay, um, now, how about the case of uh, Lorena? How about you, Lorena? If you ever have the chance to visit the moon, would you like to go? No. No, no, no. no. I, I think there are, there are a lot of most important things that I would like to, to go. I have never think about it. <laughs> I, I, it I know it is not important for me. It is like uh, I feel sometimes dizzy, dizzy. How do uh -huh. how, when you and then yeah. I, I, yeah. imagine if I am with my head with uh, I don't know no, no, no. upside down and all that yeah and no, no, floating no. in the moon <laughs> yeah I feel nah, nice being here traveling wherever you want and everything that, that but no no to to a place that I think that I'm not going to see like a big thing no uh -huh. there are a lot, a lot of most beautiful places that I would like to to visit okay great. Yeah, um, so just if you guys wanted to know the reference where I got this question, I was actually going to ask you, if there was a plan to go to Mars, would you like to move to Mars? That was a little bit too extreme, I think, because moving is like, uh, a, 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 like a huge compromise, like saying, yes, I would like to move to Mars, I would like to colonize Mars. I feel like that would be a huge, huge compromise. Um, I am one of those people who likes, you know, the space, who likes the stars. I used to be very, very afraid of the space. I remember when I was younger, I used to have restless nights. And we're going to learn more about that in a minute. Um, but I used to have restless nights when I was thinking, like, what is out there? Like, what is, what can happen out there? Now, I simply just think, like, you know, if something is going to happen, it's going to happen. So let it come. You know, if, if, if it's in the plan for my life, just just let it come. Um, so, yeah, I was thinking of that. But then I thought, well, going to Mars is a little bit too much. So going to the moon will be better. And that is also the reason why I look for this shirt. Because here, if you guys can see, I have some satellites and some planets and some <laughs> tiny moons in here. So, um, yeah, it's, you know, it's You're even... Prepared. <laughs> Yeah, it's even a, no es pijama, okay? No es pijama. Antes que no es pijama. But no, it's it's a it's a theme question. It's a theme question. Mañana voy a buscar la de la playa para la de las vacaciones. No, just just kidding. But yeah, um so moving on. Let's see if we can hear then from Gabriela Garcia. So, Miss Garcia, if you ever had the chance to visit the moon, would you like to go or not? Uh, hi, I think it would be nice to go. I mean, we see this space as a long, like in a long distance, and the space is, la is something gorgeous. 
So maybe if we have that experience so near or so close, maybe we can learn about about God got the resources to uh, to i don't know but i think it's good it, it, it is a a good idea to visit but i think that that trip is going to be like so expensive i mean these ideas of course are or the questions come simply from an offering i don't know I don't know about you guys and, and, you know, the way your minds work. In my case, my mind works very weird in the sense that I feel like as humans, we have, as we are alive, we always have the chance of getting an opportunity to do something. You know, as, 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 as long as you're alive, I feel like you always have the chance to do what you desire. For example, um, some of the jokes that I make yesterday, I was joking with my girlfriend and my, uh, my brother-in-law about um, this transfer that uh, PSG is planning to do with Mbappé. I don't know if you guys know anything about that, but the thing is that they are trying to sell one person, one player, for around, um, I think it was like 100 million euros. So it's a huge amount of money. And we were joking around and saying that it would be great, you know, if just by accident or accidentally, um, one of those millions, one of those so many millions, would end up in one of our accounts. And uh, we were thinking on like, what would we do if that would ever happen? I know it's 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 a long shot. It's a huge long shot. Uh, but yeah, if, it, if something like that ever happens, what would you do? So it's like, you know, back in the day, I remember I also used to think a lot about trying to contact Elon Musk, who is now the owner of Twitter. Maybe that's one of the reasons why people may know him. He is also the pioneer with the idea of going to Mars or colonizing Mars. So I remember that I used to think a lot about that. I would like to contact him and tell him like, hey, I am from El Salvador and we are hardworking people. And if you ever, you know, need like a place to set one of your, um, one of your factories, well, think about us because we are like a, like a, like a productive country. Um, so I was I used to think a lot about that as well. So it's something that um, comes to my mind sometimes. The chance of like receiving that gift, you know, because yeah, we never know. Um, luck is out there. So sometimes when I think about these questions, I don't really think about like where or how am I going to get the money. I think more of like, well, it might be just a chance, you know, just one of those chances. You're going, you're going to have a scholarship. <laughs> Ya, yeah, bueno, y pues en mi caso, pues miren, siento que eso pasó porque pues, yo en la experiencia que yo tuve de ir a Estados Unidos, pues yo no lo esperaba, o sea, yo personalmente era el que menos creía que iba a tener la oportunidad, no porque era malo necesariamente en la U, no es por eso, sino porque decían que para esa selección eh, se fijaban en cada detalle, revisaban todo, Entonces, y que la familia, que los miembros más cercanos de la familia tenían mucho que ver, aquellas personas que tuviesen incluso primos viviendo de forma ilegal allá, no tenían chance de ir y que no sé qué. Y pues casi toda mi familia vive en Estados Unidos, ¿verdad? Mis hermanos y todo. Entonces, y pues yo fui. O sea, el día que íbamos a la entrevista eh, en la embajada, yo les juro que yo iba con un 70% de probabilidades que a mí no me daban la visa. O sea, se suponía según mi idea. Entonces, y pues cuando me la dieron fue como que... Bueno, si logré eso, creo que básicamente, o sea, varias cosas pueden pasar. I can do all of. Yeah, so I, 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 that's what I thought. Entonces fue como que, bueno, ya que. Y luego, o sea, en esa experiencia durante esos 10 meses me pasaron tantas cosas que yo nunca creí que iba a poder vivir, nunca creí que iba a poder experimentar. Entonces fue como que, ah, bueno, es posible, sí. O sea, un día... Por ejemplo, esto es algo muy fuera, muy off topic, pero ya que eh, estaba en Las Vegas, me levanté, o sea, yo ni creí nunca que iba a visitar Las Vegas antes, ¿verdad? De eso, estaba en Las Vegas, me levanté del hotel en el que, bueno, incluso eso, el hotel en el que me quedé, yo les juro que yo no me lo creía, a mí me pagó el, el, la estadía ahí un primo mío, entonces, y él estaba ahí, ¿verdad? Conmigo y todo, entonces nos invitó a todos, o sea, a las compañeras de trabajo mías que eran de España, cuatro de ellas y a mí. Cuando él me dijo, nos vamos a quedar en este hotel, yo busqué y yo les juro que yo pasé como dos semanas empecinado buscando, no, es que es imposible que yo me quede ahí, es imposible. 
y yo buscaba moteles o estar, eh, cualquier cosa, casas de, de pasante, cualquier cosa que se llamara de la misma forma. Y no había nada que se llamara así. El único Venetian era ese. Entonces yo como, no creo. Bueno, el día que llegué, mi primo me mandó, me mandó la ubicación, ¿verdad? Y me dijo, pides el Uber para acá. Y cuando vi, sí es ahí. Y fue como que, wow, sí me quedé aquí. Bueno, pero el siguiente día, en la mañana, cuando salí del hotel, justo enfrente veo que había una pancarta de que ahí, esa noche iba a haber un concierto de mi DJ favorito en ese entonces, de Martin Garrix. Entonces yo me quedé como, ¿qué? ¿Martin Garrix hoy aquí? Entonces, eh, pero bueno, yo pensé, va a valer unos 500 dólares, me olvido de eso, no lo voy a ver, es imposible. Bueno, caminando por el strip, por Las Vegas y así, que pues no me lo creía, nos encontramos con una persona y que esa persona dijo, ¿verdad? Que estaba promoviendo los tickets y que tenía una promo en la que nos hacían un paseo, nos reuníamos frente a un lugar, ella no mencionaba dónde, y de ahí íbamos a pasar por tres diferentes discos y que al final íbamos a estar en el concierto de Martin Garrix. Y yo dije, no creo. Pero igual, pues con el deseo, ¿verdad? Compramos el ticket. Yo muchas veces había visto de que a la gente se la bajan en la pega. Yo dije, ya, perdí 52 dólares, eso es fijo. Pero pues mi primo me dijo, no, pueda que sí, pueda que, que sea cierto y que no sé qué. Entonces buscamos incluso los tickets de Martin Garrix, el más barato era de 150. Y yo dije, es que es mentira, es mentira, no voy a entrar. O sea, ¿cómo va a ser? Entonces llego al lugar donde nos habían dicho que nos íbamos a reunir. Estuvimos ahí casi 40 minutos esperando. Eso sí, habían cumplido con una parte que era que iba a haber comida, bebida, ¿verdad? Y entonces ahí platicando y todo. O sea, igual, sea como sea, estaba en la pega. O sea, tampoco es como que me iba a morir si, si no. Entonces, pero al final sí logré ir. Y por 52 dólares sí vi a Martin Garrix y fue como que, ok. O sea, sí pasan. Las cosas a veces sí pasan. Entonces, creo que eso como que me hizo ser un poco más confiado y agradecido con las cosas que pasan en la vida, porque, o sea, se lo juro, yo ninguna de esas cosas yo no me las creía, o sea, ni del hotel en el que me quedé, ni de ese concierto, o sea, y todas las cosas que pasaron alrededor, por ejemplo, de ese viaje, luego que tuve el chance de ver el Gran Cañón, que, o sea, fue otra cosa increíble, o sea, yo ni, ni por cerca pensé que eso iba a pasar, entonces, y también el cómo llegué a ese lugar, son un montón de cosas, entonces eh, ahí cerca, de hecho, del Gran Cañón hay un montón de sedes de la gente esta que está muy, muy, muy metida verdad con lo de los aliens y así entonces, ajá pueda que algún día vayamos a la luna con ellos, no, bueno ya que, so um, yeah, I mean, that's the reason why, Gabriela, I sometimes forget about thinking on the money, and I feel more like thinking on on the experience, not uh, only the money. Because, um, yeah, I mean, if I, will to, if I were to tell you the things that have happened to me, for example, one time, just because I trusted a friend, I was able to get the TV that we have here at home. Our, our TV is relatively big, and it was only $4. Because one friend, she was having a raffle at church, and uh, I was like, okay, I'm going to get a few tickets. So I asked her for the tickets from one to four, but then she told me that they were not available from one to four. So she was going to give me from uh, five to eight. So I got the tickets and I won the TV. And like that TV, I won many prizes at church. I won a towel. I won, um, what else? I think it was like a pitcher and um, some glasses and stuff. So it's like, I have been lucky. So be, coming from that luck that I have had is that I think sometimes we never know, you know, we never know if there is one day, one millionaire and thinking like, who can I give this to? And they use, they pick you. So yeah, that yeah. can happen. It can happen. So yeah. But well. You have to buy uh, the lottery. Yeah, I should. Me han dicho varias veces eso. Un tío mío que viene de Estados Unidos gasta hasta 70 dólares comprando todo el billete. Él dice, tal vez, dice. Y lo más que hemos sacado son como 70, no, 64. Eso fue lo más que sacamos una vez, 64 dólares. Hubo una vez que me emocioné, que yo creí que supuestamente había 325 dólares que habíamos ganado en los tickets. Y cuando lo fui a cambiar, el señor me dijo, no, me dijo, esto es para el otro mes. Y, no, la otra semana. Y yo, ah, 
O sea, yo no tengo experiencia, no la compro cada rato, no sabía dónde ver la fecha, ¿verdad? Entonces el señor me dijo, no, mira, de aquí dice, me dijo, solo te ganaste como 25 centavos. Y yo, ah, qué gala. <ríe> Así que bueno, things that happen. But yeah, I haven't bought it myself. O sea, yo, yo nunca lo he comprado. Así que, maybe, I should try one day. But um, yeah, I mean, luck is in the air and uh, is there for us to get it, you know? So... If you ever have the chance to go to the moon, don't waste it. If you want to, don't waste it. You should take it. Because, yeah, those opportunities are the ones that people sometimes mention as the once-in-a-lifetime kind of kind of opportunity. However, um, if you don't want it, it's okay. It's not like, you know, like a huge deal. Um, but, yeah, it's it's always there. The chances are always there. So now... We're going to talk about sleeping, expressions related to sleep. Here we have some expressions. I am sure that you guys already know many of them. And you also know how to use them. I am very sure. Um, but yeah, we're going to see that um, we have, for example, being fast asleep, be sound asleep, be wide awake, drift off, feel drowsy, have a sleepless night, uh, not off. Sleep like a log, take a power nap, toss and turn. So let's see. Here I would like to get to know what do you guys understand by each of them. So starting with um taking a power nap. What do you think taking a power nap refers to? Esta vez sí espero que tengamos participación. Voy a dejarles mayormente verdad la oportunidad a ustedes, los que quieran participar. Y conocer cuál es su punto de vista acerca de estas eh, esta terminología referida a dormir. So, taking a power nap. What do you understand or what do you think taking a power nap refers to? Uh, when you take a rest, a long rest to uh, get energy to continue. All right, great. Yes, that is like the common practice that they have in Spain where normally um, after lunch, They have like a 15 minute break where people can take naps. There are some offices that even have like pillows and stuff um, laying around the, the, the office. And uh, it's like a very common thing. And also, I don't know if you guys knew or probably you do know about this, but they say that in Japan, it is not badly seen when someone falls asleep uh, at the workspace because your boss is going to think that you have been working so hard that you lost your energy and that you are recovering from, well, from working as hard as you work. So that's the idea that the boss is going to have. However, it's possible, you know, that maybe it's just because you had um, a crazy night the night before or the previous night, but still, um, that is the idea. So yeah, taking a power nap refers to that. Taking a short rest where you recover or try to recover some energies. Great. Now, how about toss and torn? What do you understand by toss and torn? Toss and torn. Well, let's see then. Um, Melanie, what do you think toss and torn refers to? Um, ni idea. <laughs> Okay, so toss and turn is a phrase that we use when we sleep uh, or mostly it's something that um, we're going to say in the participle form. Okay, when we say it for ourselves is that we say it in the participle form. So it will be something like tossing and turning, like I spend the night tossing and turning. Because when you toss and turn, is when you move from place to place. Mostly during these days when it's very hot, uh, it's like you cannot feel like your body, you know, feels calm and that you can sleep like quietly. Um, so you're tossing and turning. It means that you're moving from place to place. You're moving around a lot in your bed. So you're tossing and turning. You are not able to sleep well. And your body simply is trying to get into a better position or a more comfortable position. So that happens when, or it happens uh, to be referred to as tossing and turning. Así que básicamente cuando nos movemos un montón en la cama, ¿verdad? Cuando tenemos ese tipo de 
um, de noches así que son complicadas, en las que nos cuesta poder conciliar el sueño, sea, como les decía, más que todo en esos eh, meses así, o en esos últimos días, semanas, que ha sido bien caliente, entonces a veces como que cuesta, ¿verdad?, poder quedarse dormido. So, people spend the night tossing and turning. Nos pasamos la noche, pues, moviéndonos de un lado a otro. Ok, how about mm, not off? Not off, this one over here. What do you guys understand by nodding off? Like when you are sleeping, but you are sit down and your 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 head fall down, mm -hmm. and and then you wake up again and you are like uh, fighting with your body not to not to get to sleep. Mm -hmm. Yes, that is right. That is basically what nodding off refers to. So let's imagine that you are in a meeting or in a class, like right now. And uh, the class is going boring and like you feel like, or maybe not because of the class, but maybe because you're simply tired and uh, like you don't find the energy to like stay awake. And you start to go sideways or, you start, or you start, your head starts to go, as you said, go down like to the front. And uh, then you feel like falling asleep, but then you come back uh, awake again and, and, and the process goes on and on and on. So when that happens, that is not enough. Sí, not enough básicamente es eso, como usted bien dijo, ¿verdad? Cuando estamos quedándonos dormidos, sí, pero no nos dormimos en ningún momento, sino que solo estamos ahí. Como cuando nos hemos depelado y estamos ahí, que caemos y caemos y al final no caemos. Entonces, estamos... Cabeceando. Ajá, cuando estamos cabeceando. Ya rato quería decirlo. Sí, cuando estamos cabeceando. Básicamente, eso es el not enough. Muy bien. Thank you, Ciro. Ok. Now, sleep like a log. Sleep like a log. What do you guys understand by that? Sleeping like a log. Um, it's when you sleep fast. <laughs> mm, yeah yeah however we can use it as referring to fast the way we use fast for sleeping because sleeping like a log is basically when you have one of those nights uh when you go to bed and as soon as you feel I mean, or at least you feel that as soon as you go to bed you wake up again so sleeping like a log happens When you have, I don't know, seven, eight hours of sleeping, but you feel like you haven't slept anything. And uh, at the same time, you also feel rested. So that is a sleeping like a log. O sea, do dormir como un tronco. Sí. O sea, cuando nos pasa eso, ¿verdad? Que a veces nos dormimos, sentimos que ya, o sea, nomás nos, nos dormimos, ya nos despertamos y ya es otro día y todo. Pero la diferencia de sleeping like a log es cuando... O sea, nos despertamos y sí tuvimos descanso, ¿ok? No es como esas noches en las que nos dormimos y nos despertamos y sentimos que no descansamos nada. Eso es diferente, ¿sí? Sleeping like a log is when you go to sleep. Hmm. Sorry, talking about sleeping, creo que voy a dejar de decir la palabra. Creo que voy a dejar de decir sleep. So, when you go to, um, to bed and uh, you, you have one of those nights when uh, it's like, You feel like you rested a lot, but nothing bothered you. El punto es que a veces, pa, por ejemplo, si nos levantamos al baño, ya no cuenta como sleep like a log. Si nos estamos moviendo, nos despertamos en algún momento, tampoco. Incluso si estamos soñando, tampoco cuenta necesariamente como sleeping like a log. O sea, dormir como un tronco es como ese día, o, sea, este, o como esos días en los que nos acostamos y sentimos que la noche pasó en nada, pero que igual, ¿verdad? Nos sentimos descansados al siguiente día. Nada nos... Um, nos distrajo ni nada así como por ejemplo cuando regresamos de un viaje cuando va, el, el día después de ir a la playa verdad que uno a veces dice Ajá, hoy voy a dormir bien o sea maquiado por las olas entonces y a veces se, se duerme que o sea nada nada nos distrae so that would be sleeping like a log okay so uh, now that we know that how about feel drowsy what do you guys understand by feeling drowsy I think that that is um, like when I drink medicine to sleep and the next day you feel like you you didn't sleep enough. You have to sleep a little bit more and you're like 
uh, you need a, co a coffee, you need, I don't know, something that gets you asleep, no? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So feeling drowsy happens, as you say, uh, mostly when you have those uh, those nights when you feel like you have slept, but then your body in the morning is still needing to rest more. And during the whole day, as you stated as well, you feel like um, like these energized, like you don't have energy to do nothing. And like you're falling asleep after anything like you do. You just go from your office to to the bathroom and you feel like falling asleep in the bathroom. So that's when you're drowsy. So feeling drowsy, eso es bien, bien um, similar a casi decir verdad que estoy seco, o sea, en sentido de las energías. So yeah, feeling drowsy is when you're tired, very tired. So yeah. Now, how about having a sleepless night? What do we understand by having a sleepless night? What do you think, Luis? What do you think having a sleepless night can refer to? When one person can't sleep of the night. All right. Yes, that is what happens. So having a sleepless night is basically when, for example, um, you have insomnia or sleeping disorders, or it can also happen in other cases, as if you are um, a security guard. So security guards have, you know, to stay awake for um well for the night is in most cases so yeah having a sleepless night will happen in any of those moments when you don't sleep like at all um also let's say that you go to a funeral and you spend the night there and you stay the whole night there that will also count as having a sleepless night so anything that causes you not to sleep uh during the whole night is going to be referred to as having a sleepless night. So yes. Now, how about be wide awake? What do we understand by being wide awake? Imelda, what do you think it is? Being wide awake. Be wide awake. Mm -hmm. Well, I am sleepy tonight. <laughs> you mean that I, I don't know. <laughs> My hamster is sleepy. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's okay. I don't know. Okay, nah, that's fine. That's fine. Ciro, what do you think? Uh, I think uh, when the people, I wake up every day at night. You know, you know, it's a take a power nap. It's a it's a wake up. Uh huh. Or a bathroom. I don't know. Uh no, it is when you are awake at night, or uh, at least during the period that you are supposed to be sleeping. For example, for let's say, say for several time. Uh huh. Let's say that someone, um, is you know. One member of your family wakes up and comes to the kitchen, grabs, I don't know, some water and something. Then they get to the living room and they're just there for a while, just sitting and, and, and just going about their life. Sueño ligero. No, no, espérame. A ver, está no. entonces, like the family member just there, you know, just going about their life and everything. And then um, you wake up and look at them and like uh, they ask you, like, are you okay? And then you tell them, well, I have been wide awake for all this time. Básicamente, estar bien despierto. O sea, cuando estamos despiertos por completo. El being wide awake eh, se refiere a eso. Por ejemplo, o sea, el, el caso que les estaba presentando es, en el, digamos que, o sea, un, algún familiar, ¿verdad? Suyo se levante y siente que anda, ajá, ¿verdad? De, de, de incógnito, que agarrando agua, haciendo esto, lo otro, porque nadie más está despierto y ustedes estaban bien despiertos y bien escucharon todo lo que hizo. Entonces, y en ese caso, ustedes pueden decirle eso. I have been wide awake for a while. O sea, que estoy despierto por completo. Es como cuando no se puede dormir, pero no es necesariamente igual que el insomnio. Porque el insomnio es como que estamos queriendo dormir y no podemos. El estar wide awake es como los días en los que tenemos mucha energía, 
y estamos, o sea, tenemos energía como de sobra, digamos, y todavía estamos despiertos por completo. Entonces, that is being wide awake. O sea, estar despierto, ¿verdad? Y simplemente ahí. Ahora, eso sí sería contado como un problema a la hora de dormir. Eso sí. O sea, tampoco es que necesariamente va a ser el being wide awake algo bueno, ¿verdad? Porque el siguiente día es ya probable que se vayan a sentir drowsy porque pues en la noche no durmieron. Entonces, cuando hablamos del having a sleepless night, es cuando no se duerme nada. En el cambio, con el being wide awake, es como que digamos que ustedes se duermen a las 8 de la noche, se despiertan, no este wide awake les pasa como a las 11 y están despiertos una hora, dos horas, eh, en las que se sienten, o sea, completamente despiertos, no sienten esa necesidad de volver a quedarse dormidos. Entonces, that is being wide awake. Ahora, también se usa mucho, mucho, mucho como una defensa. Cuando estamos, por ejemplo, trabajando, digamos que es uno de esos... Eh, de esas ocasiones en las que a veces se trabaja así de noche, ¿verdad? Entonces, y vemos que alguno de los compañeros de trabajo se está quedando dormido o algo y le decimos, hey Johnny, are you okay? Y la persona dice, yes, 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 I'm wide awake, I'm wide awake. Entonces, es como para defenderme, para decir, sí, 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 estoy despierto, o sea, estoy bien despierto, ¿sí? Pero, we may know in that case that no, the person is not wide awake. Entonces, por eso les digo, se usa como defensa y la otra es para hablar acerca de que estoy o sea, completamente despierto. Entonces, being wide awake. How about drift off? Drift off. ¿Qué podría ser el drift off? Um, let's see. Yes? Oh, I heard like someone was trying to... Um, So, what do you think being rich off is, Leslie? I have not a clue. <laughs> okay. So, drifting off es lo que le está pasando ahorita a Imelda, según lo que ella dice, ¿verdad? Sí. Drift off es cuando nos estamos quedando dormidos. No es igual al not off. El drift off sucede cuando nos dormimos por, qué sé yo, un minuto, dos minutos, o sea, estamos en eso que decía Ciro, estamos cabeceando y de tanto, sí, de tanto estar cansados, nos quedamos así un ratito, nos dormimos y luego como que reaccionamos otra vez, eso es un drift off, sí. Entonces ustedes están una vez más en el ejemplo, ¿verdad? Si estamos en una reunión, en una clase y alguien nota que eso nos pasó, simplemente podemos decir, sorry, I drift off, I drift off. Entonces, A si es... George sometimes happens. <laughs> Sí, en el caso de estar medicado también, o sea, cuando tomamos medicinas que, que se supone que ayudan con, eh, con eso de dormir, también. Well, this is my case. <laughs> oh, ok, ok, uh, nice. So, yeah, drifting off se va a referir a eso, ¿verdad? Uh, pues a quedarse, a estarse quedando dormidos, básicamente. So yeah, drift off. All right. And now we get to the ones that are the best, probably. The first one is um, be fast asleep. Be fast asleep. What do you think being fast asleep is going to refer to? Y no, para que los que quieren decir que significa dormirse rápido, no necesariamente significa eso. Ok. Be fast asleep. Alguien que no le cuesta dormirse. <ríe> no. En realidad, esa frase es bien confusa. Por eso que te inclu incluye la palabra um, fast. Pero no necesariamente. Being fast asleep básicamente va a significar que estamos en un sueño profundo. Sí. Like you, when you're deeply sleeping, eso significa el, el being fast asleep. Eh, el, el hecho que mencione la palabra fast de verdad que sí se presta mucho verdad a, a la idea de decir que pues que es que no nos cuesta dormirnos pero en realidad being fast asleep se va a referir a eso a estar dormido ya profundamente so yeah being fast asleep significa que estamos dormidos de forma profunda and it's basically the same with being sound asleep Sí, being sound asleep, lo mismo, ¿verdad? 
El punto es que, por ejemplo, el Be Fast Asleep se utiliza más con... Eh, digamos, la diferencia es como el nivel de cariño que se puede percibir al utilizar una o la otra. El Be Fast Asleep puede ser con cualquier persona, ¿verdad? O sea, simplemente se dice, ah, sí, está bien dormida. Entonces, Be Fast Asleep. En cambio, el Sound Asleep lo utilizamos más con alguien a quien le tenemos cariño. Como por ejemplo, podría ser en el caso de un hijo, una hija, mamá, papá, sí, un familiar, eh, un amigo, una pareja. Entonces, ahí podríamos decir, ¿verdad? O es más común que se diga, oh, she's sound asleep right now. O sea, decir, ¿verdad? Está completamente dormida. Entonces, um, es como la diferencia principal que se va a tener entre el be fast asleep y el be sound asleep. Ok, ahora. Um, so, which one do you guys feel like uh, is, well, perdón. Vamos a llenar ahora este chart que está acá con cuáles pueden ser algunos que sean having trouble sleeping, ¿sí? ¿Cuáles de estos, eh, de estas frases significan having trouble sleeping? ¿Cuáles son falling asleep? ¿Cuáles son sleeping a short time? ¿Y cuáles son sleeping deeply? So, having trouble sleeping, ¿cuáles podrían ser de todas estas frases las que puedan caer dentro de esta categoría? Having trouble sleeping. Feel drowsy. Uh, sorry. <laughs> All right. Uh, feel drowsy. All right. Toss and turn. Toss and turn. Good. What else? Have a sleepless night. Very good. Have a sleepless night. So, yes. Those will be the main ones. How about falling asleep? Which ones are the ones that we can use for falling asleep? Be fast asleep. Okay. Um, tenemos primero podría ser esta también. El drift off. Sí. Yeah. Es uno. El drift off. Pues para cuando nos quedamos dormidos. Porque les dije, el be fast asleep and be sound asleep serían más de esta categoría. Sleeping cuando estamos, deep, yeah. Ajá. Cuando estamos dormidos ya de forma, o sea, bien dormidos. So, uh, drift off y... Sleep like a law. Sorry? Sleep like a law. Tampoco, ese sería otro de esos. También, ok. Mm -hmm. Not off. El not off, muy bien. El not off. Y podríamos utilizar aquí mismo el feel drowsy. El feel drowsy porque cuando nos sentimos así, when, when we feel drowsy, it's like we are, you know... Um, oh, perdón, y aquí en este también teníamos el be wide awake. Ok, so when we feel drowsy es cuando nos estamos, o sea, que cada rato nos estamos sintiendo como que nos quedamos dormidos, como que caemos, entonces it's, it's something that uh, affects in falling asleep as well. Así que, perdón, Imelda, iba a decir? It's two categories. Feel it drowsy. Yeah, yeah. I, I put it into, oh, in two categories here. The, la cosa es que aquí no iba, pero la puse porque, ajá, para respetar la opinión general. Pero en sí, Phil Drowsy sería más acá, en Falling Asleep. Porque este es de, directamente, ¿verdad? Para tener problemas a la hora de dormir. En cambio, Phil Drowsy es que me estoy durmiendo. No estoy dormido, sino que me estoy durmiendo. En cambio, aquí estas sí tienen que ver, ¿verdad? Todos con... Ya el caso de estar dormido y que me despierto o que me muevo mucho o que no puedo dormir en absoluto. Entonces, esos sí serían problemas a la hora de dormir. Ahora, how about uh, sleeping for a short time? Take a power nap. Very good. Take a power nap. And what else? Ok, aquí también podría haber otro cambio, miren. Aquí podríamos poner el drift off. Sí, porque el drift off, como les dije, es uno que se utiliza para cuando hablamos de dormirnos por un ratito. Entonces, take a power nap and drifting off are going to be in the same category as well. 
Y aquí tenemos tres que van a caer en esta última. ¿Qué van a hacer? ¿Cuáles? ¿En Sleeping Deeply? Be fast asleep. Be fast asleep. Be fast asleep. Be fast asleep. Be sound asleep. Sleep. Yes. Like a log. Yes, sleeping like a log. Muy bien. Entonces, dormir como un tronco. Aquí tenemos entonces, when trouble sleeping or having trouble sleeping, tossing and turning, have a sleepless night, being wide awake. Falling asleep, nodding off, and feeling drowsy. Sleeping a short time, take a power nap and drifting off. And sleeping deeply, be fast asleep, be sound asleep, and sleep like a log. Great. So those will be the phrases that you guys can use. Of course, there are going to be many others that you're going to listen to on your process of learning. But these are, these are ones or some of the most um, basic and easy ones to remember and to use. Now, remember, being fast asleep, espero, espero que esto verdad ya se nos haya quedado, el decir el be fast asleep, no se usa necesariamente para decir que alguien se duerme fácil, sino que lo utilizamos para referirnos a que alguien está dormido de forma profunda cuando esta persona... Si bien tal vez sea un conocido, no es alguien tan cercano a nosotros y probablemente no sentimos algún apego emocional con esta persona. En cambio, el sound asleep es mayormente utilizado ya cuando hay, digamos, una relación un poco más, um, un poco más cercana. Entonces, uh, ahora, la otra también, que esta es otra referencia que, que es bien importante tomar en cuenta, el decir be sound asleep también se puede utilizar cuando hablamos de personas que están roncando. ¿sí? Con las personas que roncan, igual ¿verdad? se puede utilizar el be sound asleep, porque pues sound, o sea, emite sonido, ¿verdad? está tan dormido que hasta eh, el sonido se le está saliendo ya. Entonces ya, yeah, be sound asleep podría ser utilizado en ese caso. When people are snoring, um, you can also refer to as being sound asleep. Bueno, ¿alguna duda que tengamos eh, referida a este tema o pasamos a lo siguiente? Ok, sounds like we don't. So, now we have classes starting, um, stating, sorry, reasons and conditions. So, when we have these sort of classes, classes for reasons and conditions, vamos a encontrarnos mucho, mucho, mucho con situaciones que son hipotéticas. Así como lo que les presentaba al principio con la pregunta, que es algo muy, muy hipotético, um, lo mismo sucede en este caso, ¿verdad? Cuando utilizamos, eh, when, when we have classes stating reasons and conditions, se va a referir mucho a situaciones hipotéticas, a cosas que no necesariamente sean, eh, ¿cómo decirlo? Sean muy reales, por decir así. Entonces, uh, vamos a ver. Ahora, tenemos acá. Even if introduces a condition that does not influence the main class. ¿sí? Even if introduces a condition that does not influence the main class. Significa que even if es uno de estos. Entonces, si esta introduce una condición que no afecta de forma directa a la cláusula principal. La cláusula principal siendo... Eh, la, la parte de la oración que contamos como la cláusula independiente, ¿verdad? Sí, entonces, en este caso, eh, también se puede referir a esta como main class. Sí, main class es básicamente lo mismo que decir uh, independent class. Ahora, aquí tenemos un ejemplo. I sometimes lie away at, like awake at night. Sí, I sometimes lie awake at night. Esto... Eh, es la, la cláusula independiente. Significa que a veces me quedo despierto en la noche. Ahora, incluimos esta condición que sería básicamente um, directo, ¿verdad? Una condición, nada más. Even if I'm really asleep. I'm really tired, sorry. Even if I'm really tired. Entonces, tenemos la independiente que sería a veces me quedo despierto en la noche. Y esto significa incluso si Incluso si estoy muy cansado. So, I sometimes stay or lie awake at night, even if I'm really tired. So, this means that this section or um, this dependent class is not going to change the meaning of this one. It's simply a condition that we add just to provide further explanation, to provide an example 
of when this happens, but it's not necessarily going to change the meaning in any way, shape or form. It's going to stay or the meaning is going to stay as uh, original as possible. Now, I have another example and uh, here we have it. It's easy for me to hit the sack even if I drink lots of coffee beforehand. Entonces, eso significa que para mí es fácil dormirme. Esta es una, una frase idiomática, ¿verdad? Es decir, hit the sack. So, it's easy for me to hit the sack even if I drink lots of coffee beforehand. Significa que es fácil para mí eh, dormirme incluso si tomo montones de café antes de hecho. ¿sí? O antes de esto. So, yeah. Even if I drink uh, lots of coffee beforehand. Ahora, entonces, even if lo utilizamos para introducir una cláusula una eh, condición que no necesariamente tiene eh, injerencia en el significado de la condición independiente. Ahora, de la cláusula, perdón, independiente. We have uh, considering. Considering that introduces ca causes and reasons that explain the main clause. So, considering that introduces causes and reasons that explain the main clause. Aquí sí, esta va a tener una pequeña injerencia, va a tener, digamos, mayor participación, mayor importancia, porque tenemos que, considering that, introduce causas o razones que explican a la cláusula principal o a la cláusula independiente. El ejemplo que tenemos. I'm lucky I can get, my, uh, I can get by on six hours of sleep, considering that most people need eight. Ok, entonces aquí tenemos, ¿verdad?, una eh, explicación, digamos, una causa que sirve como explicación de lo que se dijo al principio. I'm lucky I can get by on six hours of sleep. Esto es una idea que, si bien es cierto, es un poco clara, no termina de serlo, no termina de dejar completamente claro el punto, ¿verdad? Entonces, para eso utilizamos esta clause que sería el considering that, considerando que, entonces sería, eh, tengo suerte que eh, básicamente puedo sobrevivir, el can't get by se, se, entendería, se entendería así, puedo pasarla o puedo sobrevivir con seis horas eh, de sueño, considerando que la mayoría de personas necesitan ocho. So, that's a cause, a reason why. Es una explicación, básicamente, de lo que estamos diciendo. And the next example. It's difficult for me to find a new job, considering that I do have the experience. Sí, es difícil para mí encontrar un trabajo, incluso considerando, considerando que, de hecho, cuando decimos así, I do have, eso básicamente se va a entender como de hecho, tengo la experiencia. Sí, I do have the experience. So, that is for considering that. Considering that, una vez más, va a introducir una idea que sirve como una explicación para la oración principal. Now we have the next one. As long as. As long as. Introduces a condition on which the main clause depends. So as long as introduces a condition on which the main clause depends. As long as. Vamos a utilizarlo para introducir una condición sobre la cual depende la cláusula principal. O sea que esta funciona directamente de la mano con la cláusula principal. Este tipo de oraciones son las oraciones compuestas más eh, completas, digamos, porque ambas oraciones tienen un significado muy grande para el sentido completo de la oración compuesta. Lo que significa es que una no podría funcionar de forma correcta sin la otra. En algunos casos hay eh, ocasiones como cuando tenemos el considering that, que sí, o sea, la primera parte puede funcionar. No tiene lógica del todo, pero puede funcionar. En este otro caso, no. Sí, cuando tenemos este caso así, son oraciones que la única forma que tienen para subsistir de forma correcta es si tenemos ambas partes. Tenemos entonces el ejemplo. Um, I can manage on five hours of sleep. As long as I take a nap during the day. Entonces aquí, ¿verdad? Nos dice, puedo manejarme con cinco horas de sueño. En tanto, pueda tomar una siesta durante, um, durante el día, ¿sí? Entonces, significa que, o sea, puedo sobrevivir, puedo pasarla con cinco horas, pero necesito esa siesta. Si no tomo una siesta, 
ahí sí, ¿verdad? Básicamente, no voy a poder sobrevivir. So, yeah, I can manage from five hours of sleep as long as I take a nap during the day. Now we have the next one. I will go to the party as long as you go with me. ¿Sí? Voy a ir a la fiesta en tanto tú vayas conmigo. O sí, tú vas conmigo. Pero bueno, mañana vamos a seguir con estas, uh, estas cláusulas. Ya para hoy ya se nos, se nos acabó el tiempo. So, um, I think we talk about sleeping so much that I feel very drowsy right now. I feel like um, going for a power nap, then coming back into uploading the video. But yeah, um, all I have to say is basically thank you guys very much for your attention and participation in this evening's class. I hope you can get a very nice night of sleeping. And yeah, see you tomorrow. Have a good one. And bye-bye for bye. now. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye, -bye. bye.